Good to see you. Um, is my video and my audio okay? Yeah, you're fine. I mean, I could maybe have you turn up your audio just a smidges. How about now? Yeah, I, mean, I can hear the, the the fire the trucks. Yeah, can I can hear the, the New York vibe. <laughs> Isn't that great, though? It gives you a good sense of, of where I'm at and life here in the city, in the big city. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You know, um, I've been thinking about that, too. You know, like people that live, grew up in New York or in more heavily populated areas. and um, and then the people that live out in the country and there's kind of like two schools of thought on that, you know, it's like, it's kind of good for the children to kind of have all that uh, stimulation because it helps them kind of in the day and age that we live in now, you know, it's kind of important that they can handle that, you know, and be able to like still navigate through life and uh, have, have peace, you know, and, and find that, you know. Well, so there's a... something to say about the duality of having that sensibility and, you know, being a part of nature and having that for your children. And I do see a sense that, you know, like take my son, you know, he, he hops on a train, he navigates a big city, and he has to talk to so many different types of people. He's a skater. So he he has such a different um, point of view in the world because of the, the diversity. And he has to learn to adapt. You know, he has to learn to um, be able to talk to different people in the world. And I think um, that's the plus side of it. And then absolutely. there's also, absolutely. Cause we're in the age of communication. No, yeah. We have to really learn how to get into that, you know, that parasympathetic mode and, you know, calm our kids down a little bit because we are hearing fire engines from bombarded with so much. So definitely, you know, there's no, there's no magic bullet. Like there's only, no, just, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because yeah, it's like the opposite of that is like someone who lives way out in the country, like let's take the extremes, right? And then they live way out in the country. They're not really social. Maybe there's not a lot of people that they're around and then they get in, you know, put into an environment or just say, hey, they turn age. They turn 22, 23, 24, but they want to do something with their lives. They have very, they have terrible social skills. They're awkward. You know, who's going to want to work yeah. with people like this, you know, unless it, they're eccentric types and they have other people around them that can. You know, but that's the few and far in between. That's the one percent. So it's definitely important we that we're the ones that like say, "Come to us. We like you guys. Right. <laughs> you make our city great." Usually, people do end up here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and well, that's there's the a reason why I think people that New York is New York. There's a reason why LA is LA. There's a reason why London's London. And you know, there's a ley line there, and there's energy there, and it's powerful, and people are attracted to it. And, you know, any popular city, and I've been pretty much to most of all of them, you drive an hour and a half north, south, west, east, give or take, not New York. You obviously can't go east because you're in the water. Uh, <laughs> but you're basically in, in the country. You're, you're, you know, you're not like the cities are the cities and they're heavily populated, but it's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like as big as you might think. Right. It's like you think New York, you think it's like this massive thing. And you get there and you're like, hey, this is kind of small. It's just everything's kind of done vertically. And yes. when you drive two hours north, it's you're on the you're on the country, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. And it's 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 great. It is amazing when we do get the kids out. And when they were smaller, I just remember like their first time, you know, touching a hermit crab they were like oh and then all of a sudden they were making mud pies you know so right. <laughs> that's the best you know so they can do yeah. a little bit of both if you can but um so what's what's the agenda today are we taping now or do oh yeah you we get... just we just roll and go girl like we just have combo oh, and, <laughs> yeah just... i'll play me quite his own the open heart and we just go you know and it's just fun i I like it. I like your style. You're definitely, you can definitely then live with among us because we don't, we don't know when to pause. We just go. <laughs> I know. I, I love that. That's why I've always enjoyed my conversations with you. And we've been talking with each other for whoosh, a while now, yeah. right? Five you years? Know, I don't know. Years? But I've been for a minute for the last three years. So thank you for calling me out uh, because I tend to just go about my interest in my days and 
like you, I'm always curious and interested in discovering new things. And I end up not sharing enough, you know, and people are just yeah. like, where have you been? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I've been. I'm just doing my thing. And um, I always enjoy my conversations with you, too, because I admire your your land ethics and what you bring forth to your company, the integrity in your products. Um, and just uh, I look up to you in terms of how you do it in, in such a um a business model as well as your ethics to it. So I, you know, I'm always happy to talk to you, um, um, and you know, talk all things good and wellness. I, I appreciate that. You know, I know we do things different here. You know, and so I appreciate that you see that. And you know, I, I think we initially got connected through Equinox, right? And that's kind of how we initially yeah. met. I was working with a lot of those tier X trainers and then someone came to me and they're like, you need to talk to Michelle. And I'm like, who's Michelle? Well, she's in New York, but and then I kind of like touch base with you. She's and okay. like that. She's, okay. she's not a typical New Yorker. <laughs> she's no, she's you're an amazing New Yorker. And the thing is that what really blew me away was your craft in the kitchen, girl. Like, holy moly, like your dishes, your creation. Like if people don't know, they need to go. I know you're not posting. You haven't been posting a lot, like you said, but you still have really good content on your IG that people can check out. And I also want to ask you, you know, what's, what are you, what's the next things you're doing and, and things like this. And maybe people you can help lead people to that avenue as well. We can talk about that, but I just want everyone to know that like, I look at you as like the five-star Michelin chef of crucial four raw materials. <laughs> like I was thinking about that earlier when I was thinking about talking with you, I was like, she's like the five-star Michelin chef of crucial four raw materials. Cause it's like, we had you've been able to take these ingredients. Yeah, well, I I this stuff's amazing. Not only does it look amazing, it tastes amazing. And being able to take herbs that are bitter or stringent and being able to craft them in a way that is like received in your palate and in a way that's like, holy moly, this tastes amazing and it makes me feel amazing. To me, that's what really what a five star Michelin chef does. They take organ meats and they take things that most people don't eat and they make it delicious. It's not just like, let me go get you a Wagyu ribeye that's been, you know, a dry aged for 400 days and slap some salt on it. I mean, anyone can do that. Anyone can make that taste good. But I, I think a true a chef is someone like yourself who takes some of these raw materials that by themselves don't taste good and you make them taste well and you make them look well too. So the experience is completely different than like, Oh, I got to muster this down. The experience is more like, Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful and, and artistic. And Oh my gosh, this tastes amazing. And to me, there's healing in that. There's healing in that experience because we're very visual, you know, humans, like we, we're very visual and, and contextual and things like this obviously as well but at the end of the day like the experience of something i think a lot of times goes without not enough being said about the experience of it and you know just the experience of actually cooking something you know like i i'm really pushing people to like put a seed in the dirt and grow some plants you know what i mean like be the change you wish to see just plant a seed right and so you have taken that to the next step and saying, okay, now that you've planted these seeds and now we have these plants, now let's take it to the next step and bring our hands, the two hands God gave us, and let's create. Let's create. And girl, you create magic. That's really nice to hear and receive. And there's a lot to unpack there. But I think these days, <laughs> knowing where our food comes from and how it's grown is more important than ever. Along with taste and nutrition, you know, we want to be sure that it's good for the land and wildlife. So I think, you know, people who cook, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't call myself necessarily a chef. I'm a nutritional therapist that looks toward nutrient dense foods. Therefore, I'm talking to you because I think that's <laughs> where we are aligned. Yes. And then also, as I am growing into this field, I'm realizing, you know, the conversation needs to move towards these food systems. And, and how we could um, connect city dwellers like myself to nature and the importance of the soil because it mimics us. The, the right. integrity of our soil and those, those microorganisms is very much like our gut microbiome. So we have to remember that there is that 
that relationship that needs to be in conversation. And so to me, I'm always in the Union Square Market. I'm talking to the farmers. I would love to talk to you more often. <laughs> uh, because what makes, you know, good food is the simplicity in quality ingredients. If you can source out quality ingredients that are low impact to the environment with high density, then you have a marriage made up in heaven in healing ourselves and our earth. Mm. But mm. it's a big complex system. So we have messy lives. We have children under our foot. You know, um, so it takes the, the awareness just having these these conversations. What I do is, you know, part of, I don't find myself to be the most articulate person. So to me, sharing food, mm. presenting it is an expression of how I would like to show up in the world to mm. show that look at this, like, look what, look what the beauty this earth gives us and how it could uh, provide health. So it's a level of respect. And it's just because at the end of the day, I go back into my kitchen and this is how I figure things out. Because the right. body is so complex, we have such a complex, human physiology is so complex. We have complicated lives, so how do we mar mar you know, marry those two? But through cooking. And I think it's the most sustainable action we could do for better health outcomes that, that are more of a, um, a long-term view, you know, for longevity. Uh, you know, yes, have I tried keto? Yes. Have I tried paleo? I think those are great experiments and experiences to bring forth. I think we all need to go through that. I think being a vegan has a lot of, um, uh, it's a noble act, but is it sustainable? Like I said, you know, I was just reading recently at the, um, at the environmental working group, you know, there's 300 times more glyphosate in granola products than it is, you know, in organic products. So I don't think, I think these conversations, other than a blog post, these are nuances, right? Because people have to eat. Food is so expensive. So yeah, talking to farmers, how can we figure it out? And I think we're getting lost in the, in the diet trends. And I think the focus has to go into food systems because I think that is more long-term than, than maybe changing up your diet, um, you know, just to, to, to fix something. I think it's a quick fix. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's real easy to get caught in the new ism or the new diet fad, you know, especially when you jump into a, a small box on your hand that's a screen that's telling you, you see, oh, Joe Schmo's doing this. No, now Karen's doing this. Oh, now Henry's doing, you know, and you constantly see that. So everyone thinks that's a trajectory. But we have to understand that there's powers behind all of that. And that the only truth that we're going to ever find is the truth within ourselves and our connection to God and Jah. And yeah. it's yeah. like, that we don't like a lot of times people think they need to know something or think they need something and they're always looking for exogenous things to bring into their lives and I always like just say hey you don't you don't need to know nothing all you need to do is pray and stay connected and the messages will come to you through you and you will be able to decipher what you need in life you know um, because it's so easy to get swayed or influenced by other people especially uh, when we always are comparing ourselves and whether we say, oh, we shouldn't compare ourselves or not, we all do it. The best of us do it. But we have to understand that using our time wisely, understanding our morals and values, understanding like that maybe some of those morals and values need to have some tweaking. And as we age and as you know, we go through life, those things kind of can change and those things can tweak back and forth and understanding that that's okay. But understanding that the power within us is the the most greatest power that will ever be, and that all answers lie within us as long as we can stay connected um, and making sure that that practice is being done, you know, regardless of what you decide to put in your body, you know, did you wake up that morning? Did you pray? Did you connect? You know, did you meditate or whatever it is you do? Did you do that? Or did you just wake up and go, you know, and, and get caught up? Did you wake up, go sit, go to the restroom? using the restroom, go right out to your phone, 
you know, or did you read a book in the morning, you know, that maybe is something that inspires you or maybe at night, did you watch some show? Guarantee if you're on Netflix or Prime or whatever you watch, the chances are you're probably watching a show that's either going to have sexual abuse in it, violence in it, vulgarness in it. Like the chances that that's going to be in what you're watching, there's like an 85, 90% chance that's what you're going to see. There's a reason why that information is so prevalent. It's because there's an agenda that is trying to sweep you away. You know, the real war, I feel like, is the war on our consciousness. It's a war on our minds. And we have to wage, wage war. I mean, I'm very alpha. I'm very North Star. So I say war. I say wage war. I say these words. I say warrior spirit because that's how I feel. I feel like spiritual warfare. You know what I mean? I think that we are spiritual beings living in a material world. So we have to understand that if we're not connecting on that side of the thing, that what we're seeing is manifest, that's, it's the aftermath of what the spiritual dialogue is that is either is or isn't happening within us. So, but yeah, I totally agree with you on the food system thing. <laughs> well, to reflect back on the consciousness, I think that's how I came up with like how to name a company, like what's in a name, but um, Hello Palette resonated with me because I remember 15 years ago before social media, Instagram, I'm dating myself, but you know, I was seeking information and I never felt so alone. I was an island unto myself when my children were experiencing, um, you know, contemporary health challenges. And I remember it was just so out there, <laughs> uh, finding that support, finding that information. But then when you do collect all that data, okay, when you, when I finally found that help, I realized the answers were on the tip of our tongue, you mm -hmm. know, through our taste receptors. 